Yeah, now I need to play this correctly, and there's key things that I'm missing here that I need to be doing. Um, starting with going for this B4 advance. And if necessary, trading my bishop for his G pawn. And just pushing all my remaining pawns on the queen side. Uh, so following this game, uh, rather than just cut the stream, I'm going to take a look at that end game because I know it's completely winning for black, and it shouldn't have come down to the wire like this. Uh, Yeah, let's just do this. Rather than cutting the stream, uh, let me entirely focus on the browser here and redimension that. Um, give me a second. Okay, um, wait, what's my viewable area again? 1056 by 594. Okay. So let's make that 1056 by 594. Let's capture as much of this wonderful thing as we can. So we see, I made it on the road to 2048. Hey, look, I made it. So that's an accomplishment. All right. Um, yeah, it's Berlin defense. Da 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 da. Um, light D4 is kind of. Um, I'm trying to remember what white usually plays. Usually black has a chance to interpolate h6 and knight e7 and knight g6 but i don't think it's typically knight h4 that inspires that i think it's normally the idea that white might play h3 and g4 that inspires black to move the knight off of f5 so i just went for this peace trade um uh, apparently it could play g5 right away and have some good attacking chances there too, but whatever. Um, so, we get this far. And f6 is inaccurate. I considered playing g4. Wait, why doesn't white just take it? See, during the game, I was concerned white plays pawn takes g4. Sure, he gets doubled pawns, but um, I guess black just plays bishop c2, forcing a5. 
I don't know. That's really weird. I guess just having four pawn islands and doubled pawns just doesn't work for white. Yeah, and black's king can run all over the position and white just can't keep up. But the tempo that you get from pawn takes pawn forces the bishop to move. Seems quite illogical. Yeah, this is very difficult endgame to salvage, and white needs to just keep trading pawns. Um, well, yeah, white... After a pawn takes pawn, white has no winning chances, but white's down a pawn. White's not going to win this. Uh, and Stockfish evaluates this position as being just up a pawn for black. Nothing more, nothing less. White's pawns are all fragmented and um, besides he is down a pawn. Now if you add like a pawn on b2 for white then we can start talking about can white win that but the material is just even. And it's still very tough. Um, if you add a pawn like an F2 for white. Yeah, and then we're looking at some real winning chances there. Um, but no, I think taking on H4, or taking on G4 would improve white's drawing chances though, yeah? It would restore material equality and force black to move his bishop and give white a tempo to play a5. And with the bishop having moved, white could play his king to f4 and deny black the ability to play king f5. Okay. Yeah, so maybe maybe that is just drawn. Um, computer would indicate good thought. Um, black had a winning chance, as you would see more than just the pawn. Uh, you'd see like a, a one and a half score indicating uh, real winning chances. Uh, so about here, yeah, here's where. The computer says, or Stockfish says, I have a pawn and a half advantage is after h4. Um, that's kind of ironic. Because normally in these positions, white just wants to trade down pawns. And the position with reduced material is easier to defend. But, in this case, uh, the fact that black has three pawns on the queen side means that unless white preserves some kind of winning chances over here, unless he preserves some kind of... I don't know. I guess he never really had anything there. But, having this pawn on h3... It's, this formation seems much stronger for white than just this traded and that traded and just this pawn. Um, if only because this controls some space. And if I attack one of the pawns, it's hard to for me to win a pawn. Whereas with just a single G pawn, I'm not really worried about anything. Uh, I guess most troubling is that my pawn's on g5 here. If it were back on, say, g6, or suppose it were even on h7, yeah, this is just, I'd run these up the board and not have to worry about a thing, and my king could go over and join them. Um, but yeah, here, my g5 pawn is always prone. And so I have to proceed very carefully. You know, I think what 
The reason the swimming is because there are too many files between these pawns and that pawn. If this were over a file or two, if this pawn were on e2 and this one on f3, I think white could hold that. The pawns were on f2 and g3, maybe white could hold that. But here, this pawn on, g, on the g file and this pawn on the c file are just too far separated for white's king to be able to hold both sides of this. And so, um, ah, who was it? Lev Albert wrote a book about these endgames. Um, entitled Just the Facts. I think it was book seven of his uh, chess teaching series. And I think in that book he covers that there are three ways to defend these kinds of endgames. Um, you either have the king defend against the pawn majority, you have the bishop defend against the pawn majority in combination with your pawns, or you do some kind of hybrid where your king and bishop have to cover both sides of the board. Um, and here we're looking at a position where, well, obviously the bishop can't cover this by itself. The king went over there. This bishop would have a hard time protecting those pawns. So those two defense uh, op, um, options just aren't on the table. The only option White has is to try to defend both sides of the board with both of his pieces. And here, that just doesn't work. I think by the time we reach this position, this is completely winning for Black. Um, just with proper technique. Black just puts the bishop on e6, his king on e5, and then races this and that, and eventually this king has to get decoyed over this way. And you manage to distract the king and the bishop long enough to mop these up. This looks like a very strong position for Black. But there must have been some point at which this wasn't winning. That pawn on a4 is always a target, so I can't blame white for pushing that. But where did this fall apart for white? Um, when we trade rooks, how do we evaluate this position? This is, black is up a pawn. Black is threatening to take the A pawn. Um, but, I mean, supposing that threat to take the A pawn and just promote right away wasn't on the table. Supposing that this bishop were on C4 instead of A4, or this pawn were on A3. I'm curious, if the pawn were on a3, could black still win this? Um, I think black would still have excellent winning chances because these pawns are in the same color square as the bishop. Most of black's pawns are in dark squares. Most of white's pawns are, well, yeah, most of white's pawns are in dark squares also. That confers an advantage to black. Even if this pawn were on a3 and not hanging as it is now. Um, Stockfish claims that f6 here was an inaccuracy and the g4 is better, but uh, we already ruled that Stockfish in this case just didn't take enough time to think about it and had a snap judgment there. Um, you know, back where we traded rooks, this position looked super strong for black. 
uh, how did I manage to mess that up? I mean, yeah, how did I manage to mess that up? Well, my king isn't as far active as it, I thought it would be. I'm down some tempi here. Maybe I overestimated my winning chances. Um, maybe I did play it correctly. Bishop f5 is the only way to shut out the king. With exception of bishop d1 check first, and then bishop g4. Uh, and having the bishop on g4 probably provoke white to play h3. But if it didn't, and it shouldn't, um, my bishop would be on g4. My king could move to e6 and threaten to go to f5. Um, but no, this isn't much better. So yeah, white's got actual drawing chances in this position. Well, I mean, the engine that this site uses is Stockfish, and Stockfish, if I recall correctly, is like one of the world's top three engines. So the program is pretty good. But yeah, if you want more accurate calculation, you've got to spend more time calculating. And this is a free chess server. They keep running on the basis of just receiving donations. Um, so you kind of get what you pay for in terms of analysis. It doesn't spend very much time thinking about your moves, and you'll see it analyzes the whole game in about a minute. And uh, it would need to spend more time thinking to come up with a much better evaluation. Yeah, I actually played this endgame kind of correctly. Um, I think this pawn takes pawn was really observant move on White's part. I kind of expected White to make a decision um, as to where to move the bishop. And then I was going to decide what do I want to do next. Do I want to play pawn b5? And White very astutely observed that he could just trade pawns. Um, I wonder, if I take a5, yeah. I take a5, that's probably not winning. Or if it is winning, it's uh, unclear. Not, not a very decisive win. The other question is, should I take back with the A pawn here? Would that actually improve my position? No, because I need the A pawn on the open file. Okay, I did play this right. Wow. And let's see, did white really miss anything here? I think king f4 was better. Oh yeah, and this is the sort of thing Lev Albert was writing about. Um, you need to make sure that you do not concede space unless you need, unless you have no alternative. So um, you have to fight for every last square here, otherwise you get boxed out. The so king f4 would prevent a move like king to e5 what happened in the game. So, yeah, sure, white gets to play a3, a2, but that's 
that doesn't put black any closer to winning than if the pawn's back on a4. That pawn's not going to move on its own. If anything, um, the pawn on a4 um, might be a strength because then after a future pawn to b5, pawn to b4, black can play a3 and then b3 and then b2. But now this pawn being on a2 can no longer support the pawn to b2 advance. So having this pawn on a2 really isn't as strong as it looks. Um, yeah, now this, this kind of position is really uh, messy. I don't know if black can win that or not. Um, computer or stuff an advantage of one and a half pawns to black, but I don't know. At any rate, um, I think that we've played through this endgame. I think we've learned a little bit about pawn and bishop endgames. Learned about how to be resilient in very difficult positions. Well, objectively lost positions. And with that said, I guess I'll see you back here um, Saturday afternoon. I'll be doing a Twitch ladder game. Um, I might not be commentating as much as I normally do, because I've noticed the last couple games I commentate, and I get an extreme time pressure. So I'm going to have to try something a little bit different. Um... Yeah, I guess I'll see you guys back here Saturday afternoon then. Uh, have a good morning or night, or I wish you all a temporally accurate salutation. Right, have a good night.